What's up all you spooky dudes and you dads? Toy Shiz here and I got a really rockin' retro shiz vid coming for you. This is the 1988 Kenner Toys, the real Ghostbusters line, Haunted Humans, and a few haunted vehicles, basically under the umbrella of the haunted something or other. And they have always been some of the best real Ghostbusters figures I've ever had. We didn't get much in the way of show accurate ghosts, but what they did actually do was quite awesome. Basically the premise is this, you got all these normal looking folks, people you'd run into every day of the week, including of course a pilot, why not? But all of these had a secret that was just disturbing and repulsive in and of its own as they were all ghosts themselves because in the real Ghostbusters, we couldn't have dead people after the first season. They are in fact ghosts. Ghosts are separate things from dead, dead people. Anyways, I am so excited to show these figures off to you guys. This is in celebration of the Ghostbusters 35th anniversary. Yeah, 35 years already, and I am presently at the Ghostbusters Fan Fest in Los Angeles, and I am so stoked because I'm going to have a lot of great grand news coming for you later. I even got to see the Ghostbusters movie with a bunch of the stars, but I'll have more information on that later. We're going to do the original Kenner Real Ghostbusters toys, the Haunted Humans. I am so excited, and I hope you guys are excited. Let's do this. Let's celebrate Ghostbusters in the best way we know how. This is the Kenner Real Ghostbusters Haunted Humans and Haunted Vehicles. Now, for those of you who are wondering if you could buy some of these old toys, well, I'm going to tell you the app Burkari is where it's at. I'm going to put a link in the description below. It'll give you $10 off your first purchase. When you sign up, there is a ton of Ghostbusters merchandise amongst other things, you'll find something, I guarantee it. From the real Ghostbusters to the Ghostbusters games, action figures, toys, the works, it's all on there. Go and find something rad, and when you do, let me know what you found. Now, our first haunted human is, in fact, Terror Trash, and this guy was surprisingly hard to find, if I remember correctly, when I was a little kid. You'd have to show up early, or maybe you have to ask to see if they had any in the back. He was just that character that was very hard to get, but a very awesome awesome haunted human ghost we'll just say ghost at this point but this guy is in fact he's a happy little garbage man basically and he's got this orange jumpsuit on he's just taking out the garbage he's so just you know just a can man just doing his thing no big deal love that right there 1988 columbia pictures so the gimmick for him would be that well he's a haunted human he's a ghost you go right here right here on his side and he had these little green wings that you'd pull out just like that. Really nice detail to see through. That was always a nice touch. Then flip over the garbage can, pop it right down on his head, pull out these little pincers. And you basically had the equivalent of the cartoons version of Murray the Mantis. All bite, he is a trash can man now. Very cool, very interesting, very creepy, but just a terrific ghost monster and one that was just a lot of fun. Now as you're continuing your day, you get past a killer garbage can man and you make your way down to the post office. You say, hey there, and this is mail fraud. And you know, he kind of looks like a little nice little mailman. He's just doing his thing, walking down the street, delivering all the mail. I love what they did with the detail for these things though. I mean, he had little socks, little shoes, very minimalistic on the paint and everything. The face, all one color basically. He did have some orange hair, male, on his side. There it is again, a little stamp, 1988, a little bag for his mail. You think one thing, he's all nice, and boom, he turns into this sucker. And that's a very creative design, I have to say. Very cool, and a little bit of articulation at his shoulders, but that was about it. Basically just up and down. Nicely painted eyes, can't go wrong with that. Nice sharp teeth. He had a little mouth like uvula thing going on like that. Unfortunately, mine, as it's gotten older over the years, it's kind of lost its ability to kind of stay on its own. But again, male fraud, very, very cool figure. You got to get him. So you managed to escape a killer garbage man and a postal postal worker. And now you've met up with the hard hat, the construction man. I also used to think this guy was kind of like a farmer slash lumberjack, but due to his name being Hard Hat Horror, 
well, you know something's up with this guy. He always cracked me up when I was a little kid. I absolutely love this figure. He just, he had like this tiny little head. And truth be told, a lot of these designs kind of emulated the humans in the real Ghostbusters cartoon. They were all just a little bit misshapen every once in a while, but he even had some sculpted chest hair right there. He's got that lumberjack red shirt. He's got suspenders, blue jeans going all the way around. He's got some thick clod hopper boots and articulation at the arms. This guy would corner you and he would go full on bat mode. You kind of lift his arms up just a little bit, pull his feet down. And yeah, this guy was a total vampire. And the other cool thing was like, if you kind of wiggled his head in the back, right? His little thing, his tongue would go back and forth. Now he is missing a construction pitchfork tool. Mine has gone missing over the years. Something I have to get to kind of complete again, my hard hat horror, but very cool figure, very different. Just an all out, very cool Batman. So you manage to get away from all those other haunted humans. You run into a police officer. You think, okay, man, I'm safe. I'm good to go. Unbeknownst to you, this dude's name is X-Cop. A very interesting policeman. Giant head to him. The one thing about these characters is that you could tell that we had to take a little bit of leeway with designing these. Everything was a little bit off-centered, maybe a little bit too big, but just very cool. I love the shades going on. He had a little... GB right there in the middle, perhaps for Ghostbusters. A little badge. He's got the cop pants going every which way. He actually had a sculpted gun on the side, which is very interesting. But this was actually one of the freaky ones. But you pull his arms down just like that. Extend his legs. This was wild. And push this little button right here on his back and boom. That was X-Cop. I used to, this, this tongue thing was just the bee's knees when I was a little kid. But yeah, he's a giant skeleton man at the end of the day. I mean, as you can see, just in terms of scale for poor male fraud, this guy was awesome. It's a skeleton cop. I love the design. The little faceplate flips forward. You get the little bones and everything. Just a well thought out, well sculpted figure. Very, very cool. Now, just in terms of simplistic design, and just the colors, I think this tombstone tackle works out very, very well. You finally run into a friendly football player, right? Well, this guy is actually one of my favorites, not only in the design and the color and everything else, but he had an interesting human face. You know, he's had a little, the very old-fashioned football helmet, which was very interesting to see. A big zero right on the front for the dead end that you're about to run into. Very well sculpted arms, very thick. The dude had some sculpted fingernails, some arm hair. I always just think these are kind of like leeches or something like that. He had knee pads, his socks, his shoes, everything. Such care taken into the design. And then right when you think everything's cool, you're going to catch the football. The dude just full on turns into this sucker. And that <laughs> I always love that from, the, you know, you kind of fiddle with his head a little bit this whatever you can just hear the the noises this thing would be making but he had a green tongue creepy eyes teeth the fact that he's bent over interesting choice but i mean harmless you get it very very cool haunted human still one of my absolute favorites so i thought we'd switch it up kind of take to the air maybe we're a little bit safer up there this of course was air sickness and while not exactly designated as a haunted human he was a haunted vehicle again a very interesting person to be sure nice goggles kind of had the the weird teeth thing going on he had a little flight vest jumpsuit little gloves the one thing about the real ghostbusters sculpt is that they always had just a fantastic sense of fabric and cloth down to his little boots a well sculpted figure and actually some interesting articulation he had a little ball joint that you could kind of extend his arms out, kicked out. That was it. And then also he had a little bit of a spinny waist. And then, of course, his gimmick being that you'd kind of raise up his head. And you know what? To be quite honest with you, air sickness was always one of those where I didn't know if he's really a human or a haunted human or he's just kind of like a fright features kind of dude. But it isn't until you get to his really well-sculpted, well-executed miniature plane jet seat 
thing going on? Well, you'd think that air sickness, he's going down, he's gonna crash. You kind of just buckle him in just like that to his little safety belt. He ain't gonna last very long because this thing transforms into several ghosts, which is very cool. Man, this, this, I'm so glad that these things have stayed together. So you kind of have like a bat glider ghost going on. And then this thing would turn into like a thing with a mouth, basically. This popped off and you had a third ghost and you could actually fit this into his back, kind of turn into like a monster man, basically. <laughs> Another elegant sculpt, very, very cool. I love the face on that guy. Different, interesting, but even like the little, I mean, this is a little, a little bit more cartoonish to him, but still, this was very cool. He had little wheels, you could roll them around. I love these. So you make it past all these other haunted humans, haunted vehicles, you meet a sweet old lady that needs a walk across this busy intersection. You take her arm, good old Granny Gross. Well, that's an odd name. Why are you called Granny Gross? Especially since you look like a sweet old lady. You got some glasses going on, a little bit of rosy lipstick, very old fashioned dress skirt going on. I love the look, very, you don't see the look for a lot of these humans anymore. It's it's very different. She's got her lone little red hat going on. I love it, little legs. You know, she's got some good paint, some flesh tone. She has discolored over the years. She ain't no nice sweet old lady because you'd simply kind of grab her right here, grab her by the legs, pull, and she would turn into this thing. which was just the stuff of nightmares. But as a kid, man, I absolutely love this thing. This was so much fun. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, give this to your kids now. Let's see what they do. Her tongue, you know, kind of went up a little bit. I always remember that. Very intricately detailed, intricately sculpted. Man, Granny Gross. Still one of my favorite toys, I think, of all time. And finally, with all these haunted humans chasing you, you're gonna come across yet one last haunted vehicle, this time in the form of Wicked Wheelie, one of the absolute coolest toys ever. And it's not even the fact that he comes with a motorcycle and a motorcycle driver pop his pegs in to these holders right here and it's a little mini motorcycle ghost man. It wasn't until you finally get him off the bike where you f just see the potential of this figure. So you got basically Wicked and Wheelie here. You fold this thing back, flips around. You got this menacing motorcycle ghost. God, I absolutely love the face on that. You kind of had these little handlebar antennas, bone structure. These would pop out. His little hands, blue feet would pop right out and then this wheel would pop down. Look at the sculpt and the detail on that thing. That is, I wish some company would remake that. They, oh my God, could you imagine what they could do now? But the motorcycle driver, if you lift his hands up, he's got a flat, simple, no frills face, no paint really, just some flesh color, black, yellow, some gray boots, and then this back of his Yellow was painted with the words eek. And then you would just simply fold down his face and you got one terrifying monster creature inside. I absolutely love that. The green, the pink. That That is just one of my favorite ghosts ever. I love it. Wicked Wheelie, one of the best real Ghostbusters figures out there. So that's gonna do it for my retro shiz look back at the 1988 Kenner, the real Ghostbusters, Haunted Humans, and the Haunted Vehicles. Which one was your favorite? Did you have any of these as a kid? Do you absolutely have to have some now? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk all things real Ghostbusters. Stay tuned for my updates and keep an eye on my Instagram at ToyShiz. Gonna have a lot coming at you from the Ghostbusters Fan Fest going on at Sony Pictures. So. I'm really excited to share all the latest and greatest Ghostbusters news. And with a movie coming next year, you better believe there's going to be a lot of great things coming your way. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, make sure the humans you're dealing with aren't some freaky, freaky ghosts. 
like these ones here. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.